Good morning, brothers and sisters. I hope you guys are all having a great day today, and um, I hope you continue to have a great week. Um, I know it's been a while since I've made a video, mostly because I work every day, and I have a hard time finding the time to make one. But for the last three or four days, the Lord has been telling me to make a video on a dream I had back in 2015. I'm not a big dreamer, and before then, and since then, I have never had a dream like this. When I say this dream was from the Lord, I do not say that lightly whatsoever. This dream was absolutely from the Lord. It was more real than even me making this video now. I don't have the adequate words to actually describe the absolute horror I felt in this dream. In 2017, I decided to send my dream to a website called Z3 News, and it was posted on their webpage. I am going to read that article, and at the end, I will elaborate more on some of it. Like I say in the article, I have no clue if this will happen before or after, after the rapture. I am a preacher and believer, but I know we don't know exactly how much we will be here for and witness before the actual tribulation starts. I also want to say, I pray to God none of this happens, ever, and if we can, and we can pray for God to expose anything the enemy has planned and pray God stops this. All that being said, I'm going to read the dream now. Uh, the name of the article um, is Prophetic Dream Reveals Safety from Coming Attacks Found Only at the Altar. I don't dream very often, and when I do, it's just dreams that don't have any rhyme or reason. I can count on one hand the dreams I know were from the Lord but no dream has ever come close to the dream I had in February or March of 2015. Words fail me when I try to describe the absolute horror and fear I felt from this dream. I was absolutely shaken to my core and since then have been desperate to warn people. I know, I know that I know this will happen, but I'm not sure if it will be before or after the rapture. In the dream, I found myself walking in the hallway of my home church in Alabama. The lights were off, but I could still see from the sunlight shining in through the glass doors that led to the parking lot. lot. As I turned the corner, I came to the foyer next to the main sanctuary. There were four sets of double doors all the way around for people to enter. All these doors were shut but in one set of them was a small window. So I peeked into the sanctuary and saw there were a few very dim lights on that, lit, that only lit up the stage and the altar area. Everything in the sanctuary was pitch black. I could also see a handful of maybe 30 to 40 people gathered there. Most of them were at the altar, were in deep, quiet prayer, huddled very close together. I saw my father and my daughter at the altar. I looked at the stage and saw my brother very lightly playing the guitar, but he was also very somber and quiet. I knew in my spirit this was not a normal Sunday or Wednesday night, but something had brought them here there on a weekday. It seemed they had been there for days. I felt sick, I felt a sick feeling in my gut, but I was not sure why because I had no clue what was going on. There was a heaviness in that room and such a somber look on all their faces, I began to tremble in my spirit. I felt I should go to the altar and pray. But as soon as I thought this, my daughter looked back and saw me. She walked to meet me out in the foyer. Before I could even ask her what was going on, we heard very loud tires screeching in the parking lot. We looked out the glass doors, and out of nowhere to our right, we saw a teacher leading a line of about 15 children, ranging from ages 4 to 10 years old. The teacher led them towards the children's church building, which is next to the main sanctuary. We looked to the left and saw a very nice black car with tinted windows. 
Then a man dressed in all black opened the door and got out. I instantly knew in my spirit he was either Russian or Muslim or both. He put he pulled out a long machine gun and began shooting the teacher and children. He shot all of them in less than 10 seconds. I frantically looked at the children and they were all dead. Instant fear fell upon me like I had never felt before. Then the man jumped back in his car and drove off quickly. I turned to my daughter and said in the most stern voice ever, get back to the altar now. She obeyed without hesitation. I stood there trembling and heard the Holy Spirit say to me, Get to the sanctuary, get to the altar. In my flesh, I wanted to help figure out what was going on. I reasoned with myself that I was okay as long as my daughter was safe. I was still trembling very bad, but I wanted to go check on those kids who were shot. I checked the parking lot to make sure the coast was clear, then I ran to check on all the children, but it was too late. They had all been slaughtered. The scene was beyond horrific. I began to tremble even more than I already was, but I don't know how that was possible because I already was trembling so bad. I decided I need to run to the children's church building for cover. As I was running quickly to that building, again I heard the Holy Spirit say, get back to the sanctuary, get back to the altar. Again, I ignored the Holy Spirit and continued running to the children's church building. Just as I put my hand on the door to open it, I heard another car pull into the parking lot. When I turned to look, it was a small red truck. A woman jumped out of the driver's door and said, please help me. She had an older man in the passenger seat that had been shot many times. When I saw him, I said, Oh God, let's take him quickly to the emergency room. She quickly said, Don't you know, we can't take him to the ER because they have hit all the emergency rooms and hospitals and even grocery stores and banks. They are killing people everywhere. Instantly, the Holy Spirit allowed me to know what was happening in the spirit. As I stood there, I saw in my spirit hundreds, maybe even thousands of cars that had been hidden on farms in small towns all over America. These people, Russians or Muslims or both, were paying people who owned land to store all their cars so when they began attacking cities and towns, they could quickly commit mass murders, then go switch their cars out for another car to prevent the police from knowing what cars to look for. I felt in my spirit they had been planning this for a very long time. After the Lord quickly showed me this, I turned to the lady and said, we need to get to the altar now. I knew for some reason reason these men could not go into the sanctuary, but anyone in the hallway or parking lot of the church would be killed. Just as I was going to help her get the man into the sanctuary, here came another very nice black car with tinted windows. The closest place for me to run run into the closest place for me to run was into the children's church building. So I ran as fast as I possibly could. When I watched through the glass doors and trembled as he walked right up to me, opened the door and shot me in the chest. I fell to the floor, floor and felt myself dying. Then strangely he took a machine gun and shot five big bullets into the floor. Then he took out a handgun and shot four small bullets into the floor. As I laid there dying, I said to myself, I should have never left the altar. Then I woke up, but my whole body was still trembling so bad my teeth were chattering. It took me at least 30 minutes to gather myself and pray. I kept hearing the Lord say, judgment starts at the house of God. I called many family and friends and told them about the dream but it seemed to fall on deaf ears. So for a while, I quit telling, I stopped telling anyone because I became discouraged. But since January 2017, the Lord put it on my heart so heavy that I must start, must start obeying, and if it falls on deaf ears, so be it. To all who read this, please get right with God. Do whatever it takes. Get rid of anything that is hindering your walk with Him. 
This life as we know it is almost over, and soon the kingdom of God will be on earth. There is coming a day when the heavens will become brass, and we won't be able to cry out to him. It is coming. It is no longer about just saying the sinner's prayer and then going on when you're, with your life like nothing has happened. Ask God for a godly remorse over your sins, not just you feeling bad about it. But true repentance can only come from the Holy Spirit, from the Holy Spirit and His refining fire. Then, and only then, will we truly be born again. The Lord Jesus is coming soon. Um, and I wrote down a few things I wanted to remember after I read that. Um, first, I want to say that before or since then, I have never, in all my 43 years of living, had a dream that I know that I know that I know was from God. And I don't say that lightly. This dream was from God. And it was the most horrible thing I've ever experienced. And it was so real. Um, I just wish I had uh, better words to describe what I felt. But with everything that's going on now and everything that has led up to where we are, um, I just continue to feel the Holy Spirit tell me to share the dream. So I wanted to obey and share it. And, you know, I pray this doesn't ever happen, ever. It's absolutely horrible. Um, but um, I just pray people wake up to what's coming to America. First, I want to say that I believe the Lord used my old home church just as a symbol of all the churches um, in general, and it was not just the church. It was hospitals, emergency rooms, banks, grocery stores, gas stations, etc. Also in the dream, I saw, my, I saw in my spirit land all over America being used to store up supplies like weapons and cars, ammo, etc. Fast forward to 2019. I was looking through news articles and came across an article from ABC 3340 and was titled, FBI Unco Uncovers Homegrown Terrorist Training Camps in Alabama. I was stunned when I read the article, and I won't read all of it, but I will post a link to my dream and to this news article. But it said in the article, FBI found makeshift military style obstacle course belonging to a small group of terrorists, and that was in May uh, May 10th, 2019. Also, it said it was similar to another compound in New Mexico where they were training children to carry out deadly terror attacks on American soul. And I'm sure there are many others all over the nation. You know, all the years when Obama was in office, he brought um, so many terrorists over here. And a lot of people have forgotten about that because so much has happened since then but you know it is a disgrace an absolute disgrace that a majority of the evangelical um, leaders in this nation are not you know stepping up and speaking out about what's coming they're not warning people they're not um, preparing anybody um, I believe they really don't believe they have to do anything to prepare for um, the rapture. And sadly, you know, the book of Revelation, you know, the, the scriptures to the seven churches in every single one of them, before the tribulation starts, Jesus addresses every little thing in each church. You know, he points out what they're doing right, but then he points out what they're not doing right and what they need to work allow the Holy Spirit to work on not themselves because they themselves can't change you know anything but the Holy Spirit can refine them um, there's just so much deception going on especially in the church that this is why judgment's going to start at the house of God because we had a reprieve with Trump we had a window of opportunity to repent and this doesn't fall on Obama's head. This doesn't fall on Trump's head. This falls on the church because the church has refused to preach the truth 
the church has become lukewarm. The church has compromised just about in every area that they could compromise in. And, you know, the Lord brought to my mind this morning, he, I was, you know, spending time with him, and I was in his word, and I was talking to him while I was doing dishes, and he brought to my memory a time when I was in my 20s and I worked at a, a, a nursing home. And, you know, I was young, and I had not been around a lot of old people, and I enjoyed working with them. You know, they always had great stories to tell, and um, they were just so genuine, um, talking to them and spending time with them. And, you know, it was a joy to take care of them. It really was. They really, you know, appreciated it, and it made you feel like you were doing something good at the end of every day. But something I noticed in all the older people was that the closer they got to death, um, you know, they stopped caring about the things of this world. Their closets had been dwindled down to just, you know, a few clothes to wear for the week. Um, the foods that they used to love and crave, you know, they didn't necessarily crave them or love them the way they used to. It's like the Lord was preparing them, you know, to go into eternity. They um, were, you know, the Lord was kind of pulling them away from the desires and the of the things of this world. And then the Lord showed me this morning, that's exactly what is going to happen to us right before the rapture. The years leading up to the rapture, and of course the months and weeks leading up to the rapture. The Lord is going to draw us away from anything that is worldly and that is not um, eternal. He's going to pull us away um, from the things and the love, love, love of this world. And many do not understand this. Many continue to um, fall more in love with the things of this world. And it's because they're not really digging into the Word of God every day. You know, the Bible says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We make sure we don't miss a meal every day. But it's okay for us to miss a meal with the Lord. It's okay for us to miss getting up in the mornings and getting that word in us. Uh, because none of us have arrived, regardless of what, you know, some people believe that they have arrived. They have not. Until you can understand this one key element that I just said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We ought to put God's word above even natural food every day. We, you know, God would honor it if he saw us putting his word before breakfast. God would honor it in our own hearts and lives if we would put him first. Because deception is becoming so great. If we do not know the voice of God in this hour, we're going to be unprepared for what's coming. And like I said before, I don't know how much we're going to see. But continue to allow the Lord to refine you. And I wanted to read before I go, because I don't want this video to be very long. But I wanted to read out of Revelation. Uh, Revelation 3, what was I wondering? 2 through 6. It says, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that they are ready to die. There are things that remain in us that are good, and we need to strengthen those things. And there are things that are in us that are the Lord is wanting to kill in us and to uproot in our hearts, and we're somehow holding on to some of those things. Allow the Holy Spirit to kill those things in us that are um, you know, holding us back from going as far as we need to go with the Lord. Uh, again, it says, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain and are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come, as a, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. 
Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which I have not defi which have not defiled their garments. Which means you can defile your garment. This is to the church. You can defile them. Okay. Uh, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Which the Bible tells us, pray that ye be found worthy to escape all these things. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white rem remnant, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, write, These things that is holy, that is true. Oh, I didn't want to read that. Hold on. You can go and read all of these things yourself. But I wanted to go down to verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also, I, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. In every address to the church, at the end he says, To him that overcomes, to him that overcomes, to him that overcomes. And of course we know in the in the um, last church, the Laodiceans, they were lukewarm. They were neither hot nor cold. They were rich and increased with goods. And the Lord said they don't even know that they're naked and blind. They, You know, this prosperity gospel. They don't even know that they're naked and blind. But when he addresses them, he says, I ask you to buy of me gold dried in the fire. He wants us to be refined so that when we get to heaven, our works are not burnt up. That um, when we stand before him, not that our works get us into heaven, they don't. The blood of Jesus gets us into heaven. But the Lord is refining his people now. He is drawing us away from the things of this world. And this is strange, not just to ungodly people, this is strange even to the lukewarm church. They don't understand it. They haven't been drawn away, away with the Lord. They haven't, you know, went through what we would say is, you know, like the refining fire. You know, they don't understand it. It's strange. Why don't we want to participate in some of the things of this world that aren't necessarily sin in and of itself? But the Lord is drawing pulling the desires of those things out of us, that we are becoming focused on Him and on His kingdom coming. And the message should be one accord, just like on the day of Pentecost. The message of the bride of Christ, the remnant of Christ, is going to be one accord. Repent. Jesus is coming. Get ready. Prepare for the coming of the Lord. Prepare for that trumpet to sound. Strengthen the things that remain. Allow the Lord to kill the things in you and to pluck out those seeds that are in you that are trying to die. Let the Lord, you know, let him finish the work that he began in you. Because none of us began this work in us. He drew us to himself. He drew us to the Father. So he can finish the work, but we've got to obey and surrender and get back in the word and put that above everything. So I'm going to, you know, stop there. And the last thing I do want to say is that the more you get in the Word, the more you get closer to the, Lord, to the Lord, you will be able to see the deception that's happening in this nation. Um, and it will be an eye-opening experience. And, um, you know, this dream that I had, you know, we don't, make decisions in our life off of dreams and you know we don't treat it like it's scripture but Jesus did say in the last days he would give us visions and dreams and that he would pour out his spirit on our sons and daughters and they would prophesy and I'm praying for my own daughter right now she is lost and you know I pray the rapture happens every day but as a mother I don't want it to happen you know I don't want these things to start happening in America because my daughter's not prepared. But at the same time, you know, God is going to give her 
enough wisdom and grace to be able to um, turn her life over to him. So I pray that, you know, the Lord uses this dream however he sees fit. It wasn't, he just gave me the dream. It was his dream that he gave me. So however he wants to use this dream is up to him. But I just wanted to be obedient and um, put this dream out there. And I'm praying for you guys. And I pray that we are all prepared for what we may face. And that um, we don't forget judgment does start at the house of God. So we are seeing a lot of bad things happen in the world. But we need to remember that the first place it's going to start is at the house of God. And the churches were shut down for three months for a reason. God is trying to shake his people awake. Nobody will stand before God and be able to look back and say that and accuse God of not trying to wake them up. They will not be able to look back and say, God, you didn't try to warn me. You didn't try to wake me up. You didn't, you know, you won't be able to accuse God of that because he is trying to wake you up. And I pray that if there's one soul out there that is backslidden and is not living for the Lord, come back to him quickly. Do whatever it takes to get back in right standing with the Lord. Do it. Don't waste any more time. There's no more time to be wasted. You know, the Bible says we would know the season. We will know the season when the Lord's going to return. And we are in that season. The only thing he didn't say is, um, the only thing he said we would not know is the day or hour. We know we're in the season. And God's people should be the ones warning people. God's people should be the ones standing up in the crowds and saying, repent. You know, Jesus can fix all of this racism. Jesus is the only one who can fix all of these problems. But nobody is saying that that is on the world stage in the uh, evangelical world. You've got some, but I'm not, but I'm saying majority of them are so busy praising Trump that I'm not even going to go there, but they are so busy praising Trump that they cannot even see what the Lord is saying. They have gone completely blind. And it is scary, the times that we're living in, especially when you see the church go blind. But I hope um, God uses this message in the right, right way, and I pray you guys have a great day. And hopefully I will be making some more videos soon. God bless you guys. Bye.